Hello everyone. Well, today's video is going to be another cooking video. And this time, I'm going to be making kimchi. So I've made it once before, so I know a little bit about what I'm doing. So this time I'm going to try a slightly different recipe than I did last time. In the first part of this video is the preparation of the cabbage. This is Napa cabbage. And it is a Korean cabbage. And it is traditionally the type of cabbage you use when you make kimchi. I bought this from a local Asian market right down the street from me. And I think this could be a little bit fresher. It's got some black dots on it and stuff, but um, it should be fine. So what I'm going to do is wash this and then I'll be cutting it up and I have six heads of these to do. So let's get the water going. And I'm going to take off these top leaves here. Since they seem to have the most kind of damage to them. And I don't think we have to worry about not having enough. So this is a lot of cabbage. Okay. They don't really rub off, so I'm not sure exactly what they are. down so I don't scratch the sink too much. I've thoroughly scrubbed the sink. So what we want to do is cut it in half and then cut it in quarters. should be able to open it up like this. Perfect. Then we take each one of these and do the same thing. put these over in a bowl I have off camera here. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. Sorry if that's really loud. Apologize for that. Okay, so let's do another one. Kimchi is not necessarily difficult to make. It is just time consuming.
prepping all the ingredients is a process. Take off these things here. So again, I'm not quite sure how great quality this is. What I have to work with. So. Down through the middle. Pull it open. Do it one more time. And eventually filling up the sink with this cabbage. And we will be soaking it in salt water overnight. So the second part of this video will be tomorrow. damaged leaves. first batch of kimchi. It was from the recipe book that I showed you on my channel. This is a very similar one and it borrows some aspects of that recipe and it adds other ones from another recipe that I found. I still have one jar of my other kimchi left. So it's time to start another batch. Gave a few jars of it away. And people liked it, so I'm looking forward to this batch.
I'm going to run out of room in my pole. That's okay. All of this will reduce down dramatically once it's been soaking. Okay. Here's the last one. If I was making a salad out of this, I would probably care about getting rid of the really green leaves, but once it gets in the kimchi, the green kind of disappears into the red. Very nice, fresh salad. cabbage quartered. Now the next thing I have to do is rinse it off, clean it up a little bit, and then we will move on to adding salt. Okay, so that was the first step. Now what we are going to do is we're going to rinse off each one of these. You'll notice I rinsed off the first one, but it was getting really heavy and just soaking up all the water. This way, now that it's cut, the water will be able to get down in there and I'll be able to rinse it out better. And I'm also going to cut off a little bit of this really tough part here, but I want it all to stay together. So I'm just going to trim a little bit. I can cut off a pretty large portion of that core and still keep everything intact, which is good. So this will soak overnight. It says to soak it seven to nine hours. is the cabbage will get much softer in the salt water and it will reduce down in size and it will become more pliable and the salt also contributes 
to the rate in which it ferments once the final process is started. The more salt you use, the slower it will ferment. So if you have kimchi that you don't want to ferment very much, you make sure you don't rinse off all the salt. I hope you can hear me over that drain. I'm trying to make this as relaxing as I can, but I know that a lot of people enjoy watching me cook things and make things that they find interesting. So I thought this was very interesting. A new hobby of mine. Similar to my hobby of making ASMR videos. Something I can do and share with other people, which I really like. I was actually surprised at some of the people who wanted to try my kimchi when they knew that I made some. So that's why I'm making a little bit more this time. This is a little tedious. It's definitely something you plan for. And in that respect, it's kind of like smoking brisket or a rack of ribs or some other type of meat. It's not something you do on the spur of the moment. It's something you do when you've got the time and the patience. I recently have started I don't know if that changes which I think is interesting because I also started learning how to use a smoker as well. I smoked some brisket and some ribs and some pork shoulder. And I enjoy that immensely. That's another process. I like learning about the process. I like experimenting with the ingredients and the times and seeing how they influence flavor. It's something you can improve on. 
these little tiny dots. So, kimchi and smoking ribs have a lot in common, I guess. Yeah, I'm just tasty amazing. first batch of kimchi smells amazing and actually tastes amazing except for one little part it seems that the white thick part of the cabbage had a odd flavor to it. It wasn't bad. Um, so we didn't stop me eating it. <laughs> it was just kind of a chemically flavor. I wasn't quite sure how to describe it. So I'm hoping that this recipe will mitigate some of that by soaking it longer in the salt water. So we'll see. This kimchi will also have a bit more other flavors you're going to add into it. The first kimchi I made followed the recipe in the cookbook exactly. This one is going to add some more complex flavors that hopefully will mitigate some of the other odd flavors. But maybe not. We'll see. It takes patience. Depending on how long you want to ferment your kimchi, means you have to wait that much longer before you can fully enjoy it. Well, that is the end of step two. Now we will go on to step three and start adding the salt. Okay, so now we're on to the third step and the final step for this stage. And I won't be needing to run the water anymore, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me much more clearly. And this stage involves taking the cabbage, opening up the leaves, and sprinkling salt here on the white part. Now we're going to be putting these in salt water as well, so Mostly it's just making sure the salt gets down into this thick core part to help the process along. And we're going to be stacking them here in the sink. Because I don't have a bowl big enough to submerge all of these in salt water. So 
I did a thorough cleaning of the sink before I started. that this is a hands-on process. It's not something you can just automate. You've got to get your hands into it. And you'll see that even more in the next steps that we do tomorrow. Where we get to get really messy. Applying all of the kimchi paste to the cabbage. that opened up in my town a few weeks ago and I haven't had the opportunity to go yet but I'm really looking forward to it I think Korean cuisine is going to be or is becoming big culinary boom here in the States. I think it started with Chinese cuisine. Probably back in the 70s, although it was a very Americanized Chinese cuisine. The history of how we ended up with so many Chinese restaurants in America is really fascinating. Basically, I'm not sure how long ago, um, but I think it was somewhere between the 30s and the 40s maybe. I may be completely wrong about that. Um, San Francisco, California area, a great deal of Chinese immigrants live there and own businesses. And for some reason, they passed a law making it illegal for Chinese to own businesses, or at least making it really difficult for them to own businesses. So they basically moved to other states. And there is an entire system of opening restaurants in different areas of the country. And you could pick out or be assigned or something the area that you wanted to open a Chinese restaurant in. Of course, it was very Americanized, but it popularized at least a form of Chinese cuisine. Which 
has grown mostly into the buffet type Chinese restaurant. It seems to be very popular. And then in the 80s, here in the States, you had the popularization of Japanese cuisine. At least, again, an Americanized version of it. Which is fine, because I mean, when KFC introduces sandwiches in China or Japan, they do a version of that food that will appeal to the population there. So. so sushi took off. And now sushi is pretty much a mainstay of American cuisine. Our supermarkets, some of our supermarkets even carry their own sushi chefs. So while some of it is not the raw fish type of sushi, most of it is. Some of it's cooked fish, some of it's raw fish. But I think it's expanded our palates what we expect and what we like. And I think Korean food is definitely ready to start being more widely accepted. Because I know people like kimchi. More people than I thought. So I'm excited to try some different Korean dishes. Not only in the restaurant, but also making them here at home. Well, I said the sink would hold everything. I'm hoping it does. Okay. I need a different... Some more salt. This is more of a rock salt, sea salt type thing, so. Just a few grains is all you need.
if this is a relaxing process watching this. Or at least interesting. I don't tend to edit out a whole lot, so you get to see all the excruciating details. Okay, one more. I think we're going to make it. We have salt water to pour over these, so I will be right back. Okay, so now I have a large bowl of very, very salty water. Now we need to add about eight more cups. We'll see where that brings us. didn't cover this lettuce. So I need to add more water and more salt so that these are actually steeping in the water. But I'll do that off camera. So I hope you enjoyed this first step and tomorrow I will be working on the rest of it. Thanks for watching guys. Okay, I wanted to come back really quick and show you where this is at. I filled this up with a lot more water so that these are submerged underneath. And I added a lot more salt as well. So I will rotate this ever so often. But since I'm doing this at night, I will most likely be asleep. So that's why I wanted to make sure there was enough water to really cover everything. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like in the morning. Okay?